Hey YouTube, I uh, learned a valuable lesson today. I used, I don't know if you've noticed in any of the previous videos I made, but I sealed my intake porch to my cylinder heads with green, uh, it's green tape, light green tape that they use in body work. And uh, my friend Richard was like, man, I wouldn't put that green tape on there. You should use the blue tape because it's a lot easier to get off. Well, I was hard headed. I said, okay, yeah, I hear you. But I know this green tape won't come off because I had it out front in the driveway for a little while. And I didn't want to take a chance of it coming unstuck or wind blowing it off or whatever, you know. So I thought I was going to be... Uh, smart and use that green tape I would like to take this opportunity to admit to my error in judgment that green tape was a nightmare I'm talking about that now however many weeks that I have uh, that I've had this engine after the intake was removed and I sealed off those intake ports with that green tape it was a huge mistake I'm talking about I will never Put that green body tape on uh, cylinder heads or anything like that again because you couldn't get it off like literally we used a combination of trying to slowly peel it off we used a heat gun we used scrapers razor blades it was absolutely the biggest time waster uh, we didn't even end up putting the intake on it tonight because we didn't really have time to mess with it so uh, basically, I wanted to apologize. I was wrong. Use the blue tape because that green tape is just a pain in the butt to get off. But anyway, I wanted you guys to see this a little bit of progress that I made today. Was, um, of course, previously we had cleaned out the wells, the knock sensor wells that were truly three quarters of the way full of wet mud wet mud that looked like dog poop. I mean, it was a huge nightmare to uh, scrape and get all that crap out of those wells. Clearly, this engine has spent a lot of time driving on gravel roads or out in the country or somewhere where it was absolutely dusty because over the last 16 years, those wells had, and I'm not exaggerating, I'm talking about three quarters of the way up, it was packed with just wet gooey mud so we got all that cleaned out perfectly you know perfectly clear um i think i showed in one of the other videos here's here's an example of what that kind of atmosphere will do to a knock sensor so i've got two almost brand new um, ac delco knock sensors installed um, you torque them to 15 foot pounds um, there is a, an asterisk that says, do not over tighten knock sensors. <clears throat> so we did torque them with a torque wrench to 15 pounds like we're supposed to. Then uh, we cleaned up the little uh, knock sensor well plugs and basically just decided that instead of making a little dam around them, we were just going to seal the stupid plugs to the valley. You know, I mean, if, if water is that detrimental to those knock sensors, then GM should have never made it a possibility for water to get in those wells. So, but moving forward, we uh, installed the new knock sensors, torqued them to 15 foot pounds, cleaned up uh, with um, contact cleaner and a pick and other items we used to clean out the little plug ins and, uh, Treated them with just a little small amount of dielectric grease, snapped them home on the knock sensor, and then sealed those plugs completely with right stuff. You know, it may not be the most beautiful um, application, but you can't really see it. You're not going to be able to see it with the intake on, but it won't let any water get in there. And that was my number one priority, was making sure that any water that went under the intake, by God, it's going out the back of the engine and it's not going in those knock sensor wells. So anyway, we got that done. Very pleased with that. Um, we managed over a very long period of time 
to get all that green tape and all that residue off the cylinder heads, I will tell you, it was stuck on there so bad, I was asking myself at one point if I if it was ever even going to come off. <coughs> Excuse me. But when you're peeling off, you know, brittle, super gooey tape, uh, literally one inch or two inches at a time, or you can't even get it started with your fingernail, it's pretty disheartening. It takes a little while to get over it. Finally hit it with the heat gun, and we were able to get the actual tape off. Um, I didn't have an ex I didn't have a whole bunch of brake clean on hand, but I had some three two one contact cleaner. It would literally melt that adhesive off these heads, and it still took a half of a can of contact cleaner and several brand new white rags to get all that uh, goo and residue off the head. So. Do yourself a favor, don't use that green tape if you're going to store it more than just a little bit before you yank it back off, because that is not worth it. Um, naturally, uh, the intake gaskets that I pulled off did not look all that healthy, as you know, as expected. Well, I just happen to have a set of the Felpro Problem Solver intake gaskets that I purchased for my turbo build, since the turbo build is somewhat delayed, I thought, well, I'm going to go ahead and use those good metal uh, problem solver gaskets because there's no reason for me to go buy new ones or buy another set of factory ones if I've got these better ones. So I wanted you guys to see, because that this is the first time I'd ever set them on the engine in the installed position, how utterly uh, unmatched the factory cathedral port is to the actual gasket. You know what I mean? I, that's just interesting to me how the left or you know left side wall is acceptable. The floors are pretty acceptable, but the cathedral or the top of the ports aren't even close to lining up to the gasket. And then you've got a huge, you know, lip. Just literally, a, a, it's going to make. I guarantee the incoming air coming down out of the intake port into that runner, it's gonna tumble. It's not gonna be a smooth transition or process with that uh, lip on that one side. You know what I mean? And that's the outside edge, so that's the air coming in and trying to turn into the intake runner, and it's gonna have a bunch of turbulence. So these heads could uh, pick up you know, a little bit of CFM and a little bit of power just with a decent gasket match to kind of smooth that transition. But then again, I'm, I'm dead set this time. This engine is just gonna be for a driver. I'm not trying to make more horsepower with it at this time. I keep telling myself I have a, a whole nother set of 862s that I'm gonna port. Don't mess with these, leave them on the stupid motor and just run them which is hard to do when you're, you know, anybody that's been around dealing with uh, building cars and even if you're just planning on driving it, somehow you end up convincing yourself that you need to do upgrades to it that aren't really necessary. So anyway, uh, we did, I did not get the intake put on tonight. The inside or the ceiling surface of the intake, uh, the ceiling surface of the intake was too dirty. I didn't even with scraping it with a scraper and kind of wiping it. I was thinking, man, this thing really needs to be washed. Then we were looking at the inside of the of the intake and the upper plenum, and naturally it's got all that stupid oil and, and built up crap in it from the uh, uh, consumption issues that these LS engines go through because they suck oil through both the PCV system and the un. Uh, deterred line that goes to your passenger valve cover so that will be corrected on this setup because I will have separator cans for both of those lines so that they get good clean air un non contaminated with oil air to put back into the plenum because I'm not dealing with oil consumption issues and hopefully I can fix that so anyway tomorrow in the daylight I'm going to take and Try my best to uh, clean out and get the intake in, uh, installed. Um, when I pulled the throttle body off, I was absolutely shocked at how uh, 
I would just say it's a combination of like burnt motor oil and I, I, I can't I, don't, I can't imagine it being ca carbon, but behind the butterfly, like you know, you looked at the throttle body externally, it looked pretty doggone clean. I mean, the front of that butterfly was shiny. It moved what felt like it moved pretty freely. I pulled that throttle body off, and I'm like, I'm glad I pulled this stupid thing off because this thing is absolutely horribly dirty behind that. You know, it, it was actually impeding. The airflow at partial, you know, when you talk about low throttle input or partial thro partial throttle input, there was that much burnt motor oil or you know junk built up behind there inside that throttle body. That yeah, I've got it soaking in diesel fuel right now. Yes, I did take off all the sensors before I dipped it in diesel fuel, so I can try to get that stuff to break loose. Because I started out with brake clean and a little green Scott Sprite pad. And it was that thick that I decided, okay, this is going to take days trying to scrub this off. We better pull this thing apart and soak it. So keep that in mind. Even though those throttle bodies might look clean on the external, pull them off and look behind them. And I think you'll be absolutely surprised what you find. So anyway, time to clean an intake and a throttle body. Um, today I did post those videos. <clears throat> I don't know if any guys have taken the time to look at them, but I made a free, um, what they call it, EVAP purge valve delete for my intake. Uh, hopefully you guys see that video and check it out because that thing works perfectly. Um, if I want to dress it up and make it look like the factory put it in there, all I got to do is go buy a freeze plug that has an outside diameter of one inch 45 thousandths or thereabouts and I could basically RTV it in the top of that little block off I made and it would absolutely look like the factory put it there so now on the EGR block off for 75 cent I, I don't know if you guys seen that on the title yet all that is is a Dorman part number 555 dash 093 expansion plug and when you pull out your EGR on these truck intakes and I'm assuming it's gonna be the same on the cars you have a step like inside that EGR hole in your intake if so equipped there's a step inside of there so that freeze plug or expansion plug can only go so far into that hole so you basically clean you know clean very well the inside of that hole where your EGR went, then clean up your uh, brand new expansion plug, freeze plug, whatever you want to refer to it as. Put like an eighth inch. Um, I use, I, I am a believer in right stuff, uh, gasket maker, because it's super adhesive and super strong. So I put an eighth inch bead of um, right stuff all the way around that expansion plug and then stabbed it in the hole. I literally seated it in the hole as far as it would go in because it hits that step and then took my finger and smoothed the uh, right stuff sealant all around where the expansion plug meets the uh, plastic, I guess is what I'm going to call it, the plastic hole in the intake. Once that stuff cures and sets up, it's not going anywhere. Now, something that we did talk about on my friend Richard's build that particular setup of RTVing, or I'm not even going to say RTV because some RTV is lame as I don't know what, but if you write stuff or use ultra gray to seat that expansion plug in your EGR hole to the stop, that thing is never going to leak, especially with a vacuum. Now in his application with Boost, you might want to go ahead and make an outer plate that bolts to that factory hole to just guarantee that thing can't come out under boost. You know, and I'm sure it would not move, but don't take the chance. If you're going to be running 15, 20 pounds plus of boost, you could sell, you know, RTV that, or I'm going to say right stuff, that stupid plug in there, then put a plate over the outside just to guarantee that stupid thing doesn't go anywhere. So anyway, I wanted to do a little bit of a progress video. I'm going to run and upload it real quick, and hopefully we'll get another video tomorrow. Thank you, guys.